All right, so here's a little narrated roll with my good friend Mo Brown. He's also my blue belt. Love rolling with Mo. Motivational Mo, that's what we call him. Great kid. So we're jockeying for position right here. Try a little distraction. He shoots for a beautiful single. I kind of squat down and get a good base. Wrap his neck, not to choke him, but from preventing him from going forward. Now I'm going to start pushing forward, put his butt on the ground to uh, start making a pass. I step up right there. He has a good position right now to go into some uh, Ashigurami positions. Let's we'll see what happens here. <clears throat> so I'm going to try to like back step probably right here. He catches my leg though, so I have to come back in. Kind of looking for him to throw the uh, outside Ashigurami. Oh, and there it is. Kind of keep one leg stuck there so he can't go all the way over. He locks them. Now he needs to control my right leg with his left hand or arm. He needs to go underneath like that and then get the takedown. Beautiful. Now he's going for this uh, belly down Achilles lock. <clears throat> it's always better or you have more leverage if you can put your feet on the hips of your opponent. And so he gets ready to bail on it because he's not going to have enough pressure. And so I tell him, hey, if you just put your foot on my hip, you can pull that apart right there. And the other foot can go in there too to help that, but really it's the top one that's the most important. Now he can push with that, use his elbow direction to be able to pull his hand away. And then once he gets away, he gets to a guillotine grip, not a gable, a guillotine grip, there it is. And then he can push an arch, which gives him a little, uh, a fairly easy uh, Achilles lock there. We pop back up, reset our positions. Mo's really good with this double leg that he's got. So um, we've been going over some concepts lately. Whenever I'm touching somebody, their action doesn't beat my reaction. Only when they're disconnected from me does action beat reaction because really it telegraphs itself through the body. <clears throat> I shoot in for a little sloppy double leg right there. Mo pancakes me out beautifully. Now he's gonna try to hook my arm with his leg, but I'm not gonna allow that. <laughs> now I'm gonna keep my hips moving towards his armpit. See this, this keeps his back on the floor. I weave his leg right there and put him in a little cradle type position. Now I'm gonna hug his head and there's the cradle. <clears throat> my knee's gonna go through, I'm gonna try to go to the mount, but he's not gonna have that. He's gonna turn on the side and I'm gonna go to a knee on belly position here. Boom, a little control holding his neck. Now I back step into the cross ashigurami position with double control. I'm gonna be controlling his auxiliary leg to attack his primary leg. So he's trying to hop over my foot, which is great for a outside ashigurami, but for this cross ashigurami, it's just gonna get him in more trouble. So now I'm, I'm just holding onto my grip and I'm gonna pass my left arm underneath of my right arm <clears throat> to do something we call a reverse lock. That, yeah, I'm gonna hold his heel, make sure that doesn't get away, and then hands together. Now, my goal isn't to tap Mo out right here. My goal is to get him to try to hand fight, so we're discussing that right now, how to hand fight. You gotta fight both of the arms right there. It's not just one. You gotta pull that one that he's holding on down and then reach in for that one. And then you can unlock that stuff. Now he's in trouble with the primary leg, so he needs to come up and uh, get his heel to my pocket. He's able to get it away and get his legs back, which is good. So here I am now, just in a little seated guard position. I shoot my leg through, kind of like a brambolo position. Sets him down, but I just didn't spin underneath. Kind of give him the opportunity to kind of mess with the legs there, but he doesn't take it, so I take his back. Now that I'm in this uh, little sideways back position here, I get a twisting arm control, and I'm gonna move all the way to the mount with this thing, because it's got good control. I do that just so I could take the back again with something called, called a bungee cord that we do right there. Now I'm in the back position. I tried to trap his arm unsuccessfully. I had a little angle issue there, but I was able to get my left arm wrapped around his neck and anchored onto his right shoulder, which is fantastic. And now I have my right hand to be able to peel his arms off. When he reaches up there, all I have to do is stick my thumbs inside the um, where his fingers are, and it just peels right off. So because I'm anchored on his shoulder, he can't just rip it off. It's stuck there. So I'm gonna go ahead and figure for my legs, I think, at this point. Yeah. And, <laughs> It's hard for me to do because my legs are very short. I'm almost foot-locking myself, but it puts pressure on Mo's abdomen and makes him want to push on my legs. When he does this, I'm gonna sneak the choke in, and there you have it. Look how happy Mo is. Mo's like the happiest guy I've, I ever roll with, and I love it. 
Every time I get a chance to roll with him, it makes me feel good. So he's just a great guy. Um, and his technique is coming up so fast, too. He hasn't been training very long at all. And he's just, um, he's doing amazing. <clears throat> so, ooh, he almost shot for that double there. And you see that I don't even sprawl or flinch. I think that's just because I'm too damn old. <laughs> and tired and fat. So I don't want to sprawl or do anything that would cost me energy. He shoots in, beautiful double. He's gonna keep turning the corner. I'm just hopping out and try to go for a little Kimura there, but he's too smart and pulls us on the way. So now we're, um, again, trying to reset position. He doesn't want to connect with my hands because then he can't sneak it in there. So there, he shot beautiful. It's got a good single right there. I keep my foot in the middle of the legs because um, it allows me to do a little Uchimata or a little um, flying back step right there. Now, I kind of half-assed it right there because I didn't want to jump through his knees. He's a little smaller than me, and so it's kind of a dangerous thing, so I was trying to be careful. I have him actually in something called a, a ham sandwich. It's a hamstring slicer, but I'm not putting too much pressure on there. I'm going to work for this other leg right here on this toe hold because the ham slicer or the ham sandwich is pretty good control to get to that toe hold. And there, that's fairly safe. <clears throat> so now we're back up, and we're going to reset our position again. for a little collar tie and he removes that immediately. Doesn't like that. Notice how I, I try to use the minimum or the minimal amount of energy necessary to get the job done. It's something that um, I strive for every day to try to become just a little bit more efficient with my movement, a little less movement, you know? Let things happen be an explorer. Look at that beautiful, he almost got that takedown from the back right there, it would've been great. He went back to a, re, a rear clinch position, and now he's gonna look for the takedown again. If I stay here too long, he's gonna get it, so I just roll over and get into a leg lock position. This is an outside Ashigurami, and I'm gonna get a heel hook with a butterfly grip right there. And so, it's not always about um, just, you know, trying to come in and beat everybody up. This doesn't help anybody. I'm really trying to make my students better. See, there has to be some um, give and take with that. Mo is jumping out of my omoplata, and now he is safe. Thank you, Mo, for grappling with me, and thank you guys for watching.